Okay? They're not telling me which year. They're only telling me within the year which day is it. As if it were sort of a clock. And that allows us to do queries for particular ranges of days within the year if we have those data in Darwin Core. So it's really useful for those who want to check for migration, data from a migration period, which is between March 7th and April 14th. It's really hard to do that kind of a query with a date, but it's easy to do it with a number, like day 86 to day 97. In addition, Darwin Core has the year, month, and day. These are also to facilitate searching. Usually the year is the most useful one. You want to search for everything within a given year. Then what do you do if you have a begin date and end date that are not the same? You can't actually fill in the year, month, and day because there is no single value for it. They would have to be left blank. However, if the begin date and the end date are the same, then the year, month, and day can be filled in to be the values that occupy both the begin date and the end date. So, if these two are the same, then year, month, and day can be filled in with those values. So, plenty of options in Darwin Core. When I try to do a migration to Darwin Core, I try to fill in all of them, if possible. So the year, month, and day I get from an event date, if that date is on a single day. And the start and end day of year, I fill in by using a formula that calculates based on the month and on the year and on the day. Because in leap years, it changes by a day. So it's a little bit of a complicated formula. Okay, dates are clearly a problem. We already talked a lot about collectors and the discussion about what to do with collectors was reflected in the choices that people made here. For me, I would make a list of all collectors with the first collector in the first position and use recorded by for both of them, as many people did. Then we get into a whole section in this database that have to do with preparations. So beginning skin, for some reason everyone was able to get skin just fine, probably because skin was one of the examples in the preparations definition. So that made that easy. But it turns out that all of the other ones here, if you skip, skull, postcranial skeleton, mount, fluid, clutch, wing, tissue, and nest, all of those are preparations. They're all parts of the biological individual. Now, if we look at the data, this collection has done something interesting. So here they are, the skin field, and it's coupled with a skin type and then a skull, and a skull condition, and so on. So all these pairs of fields. Well, in Darwin Core, we don't have a way to specify this separately, this type or the condition. So if I was to make the mapping between this database and Darwin Core, I would construct the preparations field from a combination of all this information all the way to nest. And the way I would do it is I would say that this is about the skin. And if I just take this part and add it to this part in some way that makes sense, always, I can create one of the preparations. So I'll show you how I did that. I'll look at the actual mapping. This is what the database looked like after I was done with it in Darwin Core. And one second, and I'll get over to the preparations field. Mm -hmm. 
So what I did was I created preparations from the skin fields, the skeleton fields, the wings fields, and so on. But I decided that I would put the type of the skin in parentheses following the name skin. So it's a skin, but it's a round one. All the examples that I see here are round skins. Probably there's some other kind of a skin, like a flat one. But that becomes one value in the preparations field. Then, for skeletons, I did the same thing. It's a postcranial skeleton, but partial or complete. And then, for wings, wings is a little bit interesting. So the wings field was always occupied by the word wing. And the wing number told me how many. This is a bird collection. Birds either have one or two or zero wings. One or two or zero of which could be in a collection. So they overly complicated their own data here. What I did was I looked at the value in the wing number field. And if it said one wing, I put the word wing in the preparations field. If it said two wings, I put the word wings in the preparations field. And didn't really do what they did. I simplified it. It was either wing or wings. And then for eggs, they had numbers. So what I did is I just used the value in the egg number field, and so on. So I put all of these fields together. All of them went into preparations. And some of them became modifiers of the actual preparation type. But all of them went into a list. Okay, Let's go back quick and look at what, what other people had said. A lot of people said something about preparation should be where at least wing and clutch and fluid should go, that's right. But the other part was confusing. And so, being confusing, it was put in the place where confusing things go. <laughs> the dynamic properties. So, that can be done. But I think it would be more useful for the end user to keep all the preparation information together. And so that's why I chose to do it the way that I did. There were, this one, there were some interesting choices such as basis of record and human observation, which is actually a value for basis of record. I'm not certain what the reasoning was here. Because basis of record can only be those few values such as preserved specimen, image, sound, fossil specimen, and living specimen. Okay, so that definitely is not right. Then, let's get into the next section. Remarks, there was an interesting choice, which is not necessarily wrong. Those people who did make a choice here said occurrence remarks, but one person said event remarks. Now what's the distinction? I believe I said something on the first day about Darwin Core having many remarks fields. One for every category, in fact. So there's identification remarks, there's taxon remarks, there's event remarks and occurrence remarks. They're meant to be about that specific category of information. So an event remark should be a remark about a sampling protocol or about a date. Most databases don't have things separated in that way. They don't have the events all on their own. Some do, but most don't. So it's unlikely to me that the remarks for this database are only event remarks. If we go and look at some of them, we'll find out if that's true. Here are the original data. Let's see if we can find the remarks field. Remarks. 
Okay, so this remarks field seems to be occupied with plenty of different things. The first one's telling us that it was a captive. The other one's telling us who determined it. There's another one, more information about measurements that were not in other fields. They didn't have fields for these things. Other one telling me about the age class and so on. So these are not about the event, most of them. In fact, I don't see any here that are about the event. They're really much more generic. So I would put them in the occurrence remarks. Salud. Then we get into the section about measurements. Lengths, mostly, plus a weight. And I think most people who made the choice said that that should all go into dynamic properties, which is what I would do with it. And that's what I did do with it when I made my mapping. One person decided that this information could go into measurements or facts, which is not wrong, but it would mean that the data set had to be mapped into non-simple Darwin core. Do you remember that I said that the re resource relationship and the measurement or facts were not simple Darwin core? Okay, so this is not wrong, but it makes the database more complicated than it needs to be. But mostly people got these right, they should go into dynamic properties. Same with these here. Gender was easy, other ID num was definitely not easy. If we look at other ID num in the original database, it doesn't help us very much just looking at the values. It's this field here. They're, they're strange numbers that we have no idea what they mean. So this is a case where if I'm helping the collection to do the mapping to Darwin Core, I would ask them, what are these? What are these things? And they would tell me, well, it's somebody else's collector number sometimes, and sometimes it's the catalog number in a different institution, and so on. So for me, both of these fields, other ID num one and other ID num two, belong in other catalog numbers. And I would put them both together in that field. And I don't think anyone chose that. There was record number, but it turns out that I believe this, field, this database does not have a field exactly for record number, if I recall correctly. Yes, that is true. And I believe it is also true that neither other ID num1 nor other ID num2 always contains a collector number. It does sometimes. Whenever there is a collector number, it's in those fields. But those fields do not always contain collector numbers. So I would put them in other ID number rather than record number, just to be Sure. The original source field in their database is a slightly confusing one. You can see that all kinds of choices were made and none of them the correct one with a potential exception of the rights holder. If we look at original source, it turns out that that field contains information about where the specimen came from to begin with. For some reason, there was a permanent loan or an exchange where this collection acquired a specimen from a different university. So that's where it came from. Now, it might be that this university still holds the rights over that specimen, but I doubt it. So that 
original source field 